Hello everyone, welcome back to the virtual class of political science. So today we are going to start a new chapter that is uh, from section B, local self-government. This is the second last chapter from uh, section B. So in this we will discuss about uh, uh, the important features of uh, 73rd and 74th amendment act and uh, compositions and functions of uh, Jila Parishad and municipal corporation. So this is only these are the things we have to discuss as per the reduced syllabus given by the council okay so these four topics we have to discuss so local self-government and in this we'll discuss about 73rd amendment act so why this 73rd amendment act was passed we need to understand first for removing the defects of panchayati raj as well as for strengthening its institution Union Parliament passed a 73rd Amendment Act in the year 1992. Okay, so its main purpose was to remove and strengthen Panchayati Raj in India. Okay, through it, a comprehensive and good attempt was made for securing a more regular, more active, and more efficient working of Panchayati Raj institution. So this was the main intention okay so on april 23rd 1994 uh, all the states of india completed the process of enacting fresh laws for strengthening their respective panchayati raj institutions okay in accordance with the rules laid down by the 73rd amendment act okay so thereafter an amendment and reformed panchayati raj system came into operation in all rural areas okay so the enforcement of 73rd amendment act marked the beginning of the process of a grant of some more powers to panchayats and other rural institutions okay so an important and a strong drive towards the strengthening of the democratic development process in the rural areas of India got initiated. So this process still is at work. So accordingly, how the Panchayati Raj system was uh, uh, given a clear definitions by the 73rd Amendment Act uh, that we will discuss here. So you may be asked uh, the questions like uh, uh, mention the important features of 73rd Amendment uh, Act. So if it is asked so, then these are some of the important features that uh, I'm going to explain you one by one. So the main features of 73rd Amendment Act, okay, 73rd Amendment Act for local self-government in the rural areas and one more is there, 74th Amendment Act that is for the urban local self-government, okay. So it is mentioned clearly that uh, establishment of three tire structure, establishment of a uh, three tier structure so there will be a three tier structure at the rural areas at the top will be uh, jila parishad below that uh, will be panchayat samiti and at the village level there will be gram panchayats and gram sabha okay so you can see over here okay at the village level 10 gram sabhas will be there 10 gram panchayats will be there just above that will be three panchayat samitis okay okay three panchayat samitis and above that will be jila parishad that means one jila parishad under one jila parishad three blocks will be there and under these three blocks 10 gram panchayats and 10 gram sabhas will be there okay so three level village level block level and the district level okay so this is how the three tire structure is been made so we know we fall under which block kalchini block right so Next one we have is that uh, establishment of a Gram Sabha at the village level. So definitely this is must. Gram Sabha establishment is must. It is clearly mentioned. Establishment of Gram Sabha. Okay. Gram Sabha at the village level. So at the village level, Gram Sabha and Gram Panchayat is there. Right. So if you remove Gram Sabha, then importance of this, this whole structure will become meaningless. So importance has been given for Gram Sabha. So what is the composition of Gram Sabha? All the adult member of that village are the members of Gram Sabha. Each and every people living in that village are the members of Gram Sabha. Okay. Now, next one we have is uh, 
regular election to panchayats every five years so that means every after five years regular elections will be conducted okay regular elections will be conducted so the elections to the panchayats every after five years are conducted by the state election commission okay and that will be appointed by the governor so it is mentioned the state election commission consisting of state election commissioner appointed by the governor holds the election to the panchayat so this election which is held every after five years are conducted by the state election commission okay state election commission so every after five years now a uh, small thing i would like to explain over here suppose for example if the panchayat is dissolved before the completion of full term so what will be the result okay if it is dissolved before the expiry of the full five years term new panchayat will have to be elected within six months okay within six months new uh, election has to be done if the remaining period at the time of dissolution is less than six months if it is less than six months okay the new panchayat will have the full five years term suppose uh, the term of uh, every uh, panchayat samiti uh, sorry panchayat okay is uh, five years so if it is dissolved before five years and the dissolution period is less than six months then a fresh election whichever will be con con uh, elected or be conducted will get a full five years term full another five years term okay so but if it is more than six months if the uh, election is held and the dissolution is done be, uh, which has a maximum f more than six months then the remaining period only will be the term of the elected body okay the election which has been conducted will have to continue with the previous five years term so if it is less will have a full five year they will get the full five years term if it is more than six months then they have to continue with the previous term okay so this is all about uh, the elections okay so now that you don't have to write in detail just for your general information i have told you now number four you can see here so no need to get confused over here reservation seats will be reserved for stsc okay so reservation of seats okay reservation of seats for st and sc seats will be reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe scheduled caste and scheduled tribe okay and then again reservation of some post of chairpersons will also be reserved for sc and st that is general some seats local uh, uh, person contesting or any uh, ward which they are representing they can be sc or st member so some seats will be reserved for st and sc and some some post of chairperson some post of chairperson will also be reserved for st and sc okay now apart from this apart from this certain seats will also be reserved for women certain seats will also be reserved for women you can mention is mentioned one third of the post of chairperson you can see here it is mentioned chairperson one third of the chairpersons uh, post of chairpersons uh, for women also will be reserved okay so all together how many you can see here reservation of not less than 33 percent reservation of seats not less than 30 percent will be kept for women that means 33 percent of uh, seats are reserved for women 33 percent but uh, in october 2009 yeah in october 2009 uh, the government decided to increase reservation okay for women from 33 percent to 50 percent so this was decided in 2009 okay so the reservation has been uh, increased from 33 to 50 percent okay so this is all about the reserve so here you can see here importance is given to women also 33 percent seats now is increased to 50 percent has been given for women that means the government even wants the women also to take active part in the local self government okay now you can see here representation of local mps and mls that means 
there will be a representation in the local bodies by MPs and MLAs in the Panchayati Raj system. So MPs of that particular region, MLAs of that particular region will also be the representative in the Panchayati Raj system. Okay, so this is all about uh, the uh, important uh, features. These are some of the important features of uh, uh, 73rd Amendment Act. So not a big deal. So if you are asked, uh, uh, mention the important features of uh, uh, 73rd Amendment Act, then you can write down these six points. You will get the full marks. Okay, hope you all have understood this one. And one more, you can see that uh, continuous, active, stronger and more productive performance of the Panchayati Raj institution was expected from 73rd Amendment Act. Okay, so this is all about the 73rd Amendment Act. Okay, and one more, like uh, uh, it is mentioned there in the 73rd Amendment Act that every after five years, Every after five years, governor of the state will constitute finance commission to review the financial position of the panchayats and make suggestions. So that will be done by the governor to get the feedback whether the panchayati system, panchayati raj system is working, functioning smoothly or not. Okay, so hope you all have understood it. So now I'll help you or I'll, now I'm going to teach you. Uh, the compositions and the functions of a Zilla Parishad. Okay. So now we'll discuss about uh, the compositions and the functions of Zilla Parishad. Okay. So two topics from uh, the local self government at the rural areas that is uh, 73rd Amendment Act. Just before this we have discussed. Now we'll discuss the composition and the functions of Zilla Parishad. Okay, so composition. You can see here how is Zilla Parishad composed. Of? Zilla Parishad is the uh, topmost level at the uh, at the village level. Okay, sorry, uh, in the district level at the top comes uh, Zilla Parishad. Below that block, then just uh, below block uh, village uh, panchayats are there. Okay, so how it is composed of? Who all are the members of uh, Zilla Parishad? You can see here. Deputy Commissioner, okay. Deputy Commissioner is uh, the member, okay. The second one, uh, you can see here, heads of all government departments or heads of all the government departments are also in this, okay. Heads of all government departments. Then third one, BDOs, Block Development Officer, and Chairperson of all Panchayat Samitis. You can see here, Chairpersons of all Panchayat Samitis, okay. Just below the Jilla Parishad Panchayat Samitis are there, no? So the chairpersons of all the Panchayat Samiti. As I told you, three uh, Panchayat Samitis are there just be, uh, under one Jilla Parishad. So the chairperson of uh, all the Panchayat Samitis. Okay. Now next one is that uh, the member of parliament, member of legislative assembly belonging to that district. Some MPs and MLAs belonging to that district are also composed in the uh, Jila Parishad. Okay, so the, what is the composition of Jila Parishad? Jila Parishad is composed of Deputy Commissioner, Head of all Government Departments, BDOs and Chairpersons of all Panchayat Samitis, MPs and MLAs belonging to that district are, they are the one who form the uh, composition of Jila Parishad. Okay, now apart from this composition, uh, we only know that uh, BDO, no, we remember BDO is related to Jila Parishad, so others are also there. Okay, so this, if you don't remember all this, just remember BDOs and the Panchayat person of Panchayat Samitis, MPs and MLAs. Okay, now what are the functions? What are the functions of Jila Parishad? What are the functions of Jila Parishad? So you can see here. The first uh, important uh, function of Jila Parishad is uh, coordinates the work. That means Jila Parishad coordinates the working of the entire Panchayat Samiti as well as uh, the village level. Okay. So at the top, Jila Parishad is Jila Parishad coordinates the work of uh, Panchayat Samitis in the district. So next one, you can see here. This we have already done. 
नेक्स्ट वन इज दैट रिकमेंड ग्रांट्स इन एड फॉर लोकल बॉडी सो रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ ग्रांट्स टू ऑल द लोकल बॉडीज आर डन बाय द जिला परिषद ओके नेक्स्ट वन वी हैव इज जिला परिषद हेल्प्स इन द फॉर्मुलेशन एंड इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ वेरियस प्लान्स ऑल द प्लान्स वेरियस प्लान्स आर फॉर्मुलेटेड एज वेल एज इंप्लीमेंटेड बाय द जिला परिषद ओके दैट मींस फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ प्लान्स first they formulate the plans and then implementations are the work of jila parishad okay the next one we have is uh, jila parishad acts as a link link between whom the government and the local bodies so in west bengal government of west bengal is there local bodies are there so this jila parishad acts as a link between the government of west bengal and the local body so it it, it it is not only west bengal i am discussing about entire states okay so jila parishad of every state links or act as a link between the government and the local bodies so these are the uh, functions of uh, jila parishad so if you remember this you are going to get a good mark so okay composition four points i have answered and function this four if you remember your problem will be solved so this is all about jila parishad hope you all have understood it okay so from this topic the 73rd amendment act and the function of jila parishad and the composition of jila parishad you have to prepare nothing else okay so in the next class uh, i'll discuss about uh, 74th amendment act and the composition and functions of a, a municipal corporation okay so till then take care stay safe bye bye